This is gonna be so much harder than I think it's gonna be. It's Talisha and I can't believe how long it has been since I have done a sit down video um, and I'm not gonna lie it's due it's not due to lack of wanting to it's been due to lack of time which now I have plenty of yes as you can see I've done myself a mischief <laughs> um, I'm just gonna get straight into what happened and then I have a little few things that I want to go through with you guys about how I am rehabbing this. <laughs> For those of you who don't really know what I've been doing with myself lately, I do run my own business. I'm a horse breaker and trainer and I've been doing that since January this year. Obviously I've worked with horses as an employee for people and studs for years and years before that but it wasn't until this January where I started doing it all on the back of my own business. It has been going really well I'm sure you guys have probably already watched my week in the life um, and if you haven't I recommend watching it just to see what I kind of get up to on a typical week um, but yeah now to acknowledge the elephant in the room my leg <laughs> I'm currently in a massive leg brace to support my knee so I'll go over the accident and then what I've done to myself and then I'm going to go over how I am looking after myself, which is also a massive thank you to my sponsor, Tough Rock, who they always help me through my injuries, whether it's horses or people, because <laughs> they do have a human range, but I'll get more into that. And I also want to say thank you for Tough Rock throughout this time, because as you guys probably know, I do marketing work for Tough Rock, and they are going to do a good job of keeping me busy through this time of not being able to do anything with horses. As of filming this, this happened four days ago, I happened on the first horse of the morning, which was just like the, the highlight of it, because it's just like one of those moments where you're like, I knew I should have stayed in bed this morning. This was not worth getting up to do one horse and do this to myself. Um, this is a horse I had ridden once before, and I... And she is a racehorse, she's not a breaker, she's a pre-trainer, so she's one of the slightly older racehorses. None of my breakers or anything like that, they wouldn't do this to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I did what I normally do with the horses who are a little bit fresher. I started, I put her in the round yard because I had ridden her the day before, but she just had a lot of energy and was just, I just felt it was safer to ride her another day in the round yard before I took her out. So I tacked her up, um, lunged her around the round yard, she was fine, she didn't do a thing wrong, I got on her and I, by this stage I'd been cantering four, five laps already without a problem and the other breaker was in the round yard next to me and she had a horse, which we do all the time, we always both have horses, you know, the round yards are right next to each other but we always have horses like in both round yards and that her horse was tied up to the side of the round yard and it pulled back and kind of like just made a bit of sound nothing that should have set my horse off but it did um, and then my horse started to buck and bronk and we kept going around the round yard and then she started like squashing the left side of my body against the round yard I've got bruises on my shins and stuff down here as well on my knees you can probably see my knee bruises here because um, she was like squashing that side of me against the round yard wall and then <clears throat> I just was unseated and I went over the top of her, landed on the sand, nice soft ground like landing and felt a bit of relief because I was like cool, fine. I obviously landed slightly in front of her because um, then as she's continued to run past following the thing in the round yard, I felt her legs catch my right leg. She's got it and pulled it out like my the bottom of my leg and because it's gotten caught as she's run past, she's pulled it that way. Which means I have done a grade 2 sprain to my MCL, which is the inside here. So it is here, going along the inside of my knee because it's hyper flexed out. So immediately when it happened, I just virtually started screaming in pain and crying. Um, and the other breaker ran in and was like, 
what's wrong? What's wrong? I was like, I don't think anything's broken. And then one of the workers who works on this farm that I was at ran over and they both helped me up and got me out. At this stage, I was running off a lot of, like I was still, my body was very warm and I was running off a lot of adrenaline. So I didn't think it was as bad as it was. And um, the owner of this farm came over and said to me, like, are you you know, do you want me to take you to the hospital, I'll drive you to the hospital? I was like, no, 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 nothing's broken. Because I knew nothing was broken. And like my head, when I'm like, nothing's broken, I'm fine. Like that's, it's bad. Yes, I know it's very bad, but that's what my head does. I'm like, nothing's broken, I'm fine. And um, then one of the workers at that farm also offered to drive me home because like it was my right leg, which is obviously what I use to drive. And I was like, no, 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 it's fine, it's okay. And it's not until I got into the car and started to drive that I realized how big of a mistake that was. So I immediately was brought to tears and I was like, well, I'm already driving. I may as well just go, which was such a dumb decision. Um, but at the time I didn't think it was as bad as it was. I felt physically sick. I had to try and drive with my left leg because I was nearly throwing up from the pain of driving with my right leg. Anyway, I got home and my boyfriend took me straight to the hospital where the doctor there told me that I've sprained it, um, should only take four days, maybe a week to get better and recommended that I go to a physio so they could tape it. I'm like, oh, cool, that's, that's a good outcome. And I called some physios to try and get in the next day and understandably a lot of them were full. Um, so I, like my boyfriend has done a bit of a physio course as well. So he knows how to do all the strapping because he was a, an athlete when he was younger. When he was injured, he also learned how to like rehab other people's injuries. So um, he was able to like, he, he could tape an MCL because we were told it was an MCL. So anyway, uh, we were like, oh, well, maybe we will just, I'll just get like my boyfriend to tape it myself and we won't bother going to the physio. Anyway, I'm glad that one of the physios called us back. I didn't leave a message, but they called me back and said that they had a missed call for me. And I was like, oh, well, you know, Thought it was a long shot because every other physio was booked out for the next day but they had a cancellation at 9 30 the next morning so I thought all right I'll go and like this wasn't a normal physio appointment this is a specifically for injuries that are 24 to 48 hours old and it's essentially for them to look at it and strap it we're not doing big scary exercises that you know it's not about the rehabbing, it's about getting it started to be on the right track. Anyway, as soon as I told my physio what the doctor had said about four to four days a week, he laughed and I was like, mm -hmm, that's a good sign, great. <laughs> and then unfortunately it was not a grade one sprain. Like if it was a grade one sprain, I would have just had to have the tape, which would have been easier, but he said even with you know, a grade one sprain, it still wasn't going to be a week. But anyway, unfortunately, it was a little bit worse and which character, which made it a grade two and with a grade two tape is not enough. So I needed to have this brace on, as you can see. Um, and unfortunately, with what comes with a grade two sprain is four to six weeks off. Yeah. <laughs> so could be a lot worse. I'm lucky I didn't tear it or do more damage because it could have easily been, you know, nine months off. Knees are not something that you mess around with, as I'm sure you all know. Um, so I have to see a physio weekly at this point and hopefully each week I'll have more of an idea about the exact time off that I'll need. But at this stage, it's four to six weeks. I go back in a couple days and hopefully I get some amazing news and say, oh, it's healing better than I expected. You don't need, you only need another week or so. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to get my hopes up, but it's literally been four days and I'm already going crazy because I'm sure as you guys know, I am, I mean, just from my week in the life that you watched earlier, I don't typically sit down for long. I am very busy. I do a lot of things. And it's how I like to live. I like being busy. I am trying to find other things to keep me occupied throughout this time and hopefully <laughs> I'll stay sane. But um, yeah, so it means that I have had to send horses back to their owners. Unfortunately, um, they'll all come back once I am better, which is good, but it still sucks. Um, and I 
have some of my breakers, like racehorse breakers, luckily were finishing up on Friday. So they just were two rides short of being like properly, like I injured this on Thursday morning on my first horse. So luckily, um, they just t missed t the two last days, but it's fine. They were, they were quiet anyway, so it's not a big deal. But it just meant that I couldn't, I was, I had a few more to take on of some that I was starting on Thursday. And obviously that <laughs> I couldn't take them on. <laughs> and a few more that I was getting this week, I've just been told. But it's fine. <laughs> it's a shame and it's going to be very hard for me. But I'm trying to do my best. And honestly, all I can do throughout this time is make sure I'm doing the exercises that I'm supposed to be doing from the physio. And looking after it through icing or I'll show you how I go about my icing. But yeah. So that's what happened. That's an update on my life. Um, I am going to go over what I'm doing to look after it. I obviously have physio appointed exercises, um, which I'm going to do first just to kind of warm my leg up and then I'll show you how I go about looking after the sprain itself using a tougher product, which is actually the Shirley's range, which is the human range and it's the body mud. So if you guys know Tough Rock Poultice, which is the horse version, it is literally the human version of Poultice. You guys all know Poultice, I'm sure you do. It, everyone has it in their tack box, it's a horsey essential. Hence why Shirley's body mud should be an essential for you. Because I have used this so many times, even with little injuries when I've, say, gotten a sore ankle because I've twisted my ankle or a sore wrist sometimes from a horse pulling me the wrong way. It is amazing. And I'm actually going to show you a different technique to use this mud, which is really, really helpful for me um, because obviously I can't be messing around with my knee too much and this way is perfect. But first of all, I'm going to get into, I'm just going to quickly do my physio exercises. I'm not going to bother showing those because they're appointed to me from my physio for, for this injury, for the specific thing that I've done to it. So this is really something that you know, if you guys are injure your knee or whatever happens, you should be getting your exercises from your physio because each individual injury is different and you shouldn't be just treating it on your own without a professional's advice. So I'm going to quickly do my um, exercises and then I'm going to show you what I do with the body mud. So the only things you need for this is Glad Wrap, obviously the Shirley's Body Wellness Mud, a paper towel and something to mix your body mud with. So... The first thing I do is I prepare the paper towel and the glad wrap just to make sure that's all ready so I can put the body mud straight onto the towel when I've got it all mixed up and ready. So here you'll see I've got two pieces of paper towel just laid out there, that's all you need. And then I'm going to put glad wrap under that so then I can just easily seal it once I've got the body mud on the paper towel itself. So sometimes you might need to add water to it. I added a tiny little bit of water and as you can see, I'm just stirring it here until it's a good consistency. And then once it's ready, I just put one to two mils down on one half of the paper towel. As you can see, I'm doing here with my little stirring stick and also using it to apply the mud to the paper towel. And then I can just easily fold it over and then also fold the glad wrap over as well. And as you can see, it's super clean. I have not got any of it on my skin. So I've just got a pillow under my knee just to support it while well, I've got the brace off. Now, as you can see, I've got my piece of plastic and I'm just going to lift my knee up a little bit so I can put it on the bottom and then it should just sit nicely here. You can also wrap a bandage around it if it was in a position where it doesn't stay very nicely but because I can easily tuck it under my knee and just place it on top it sits really really nicely in place the body mud in this imitates compression a compression wrap so you don't need to wrap it but if it is in a position where you can't have it lying here like i do obviously that's what you can do the cool thing about this is when you have the poultice on you can actually hover your hand over and feel where the injury is so obviously the injury is not here I'm not touching as you can see there's no heat coming out of that but if I move you can see how far away I'm holding my hand but I can feel the heat coming out along here which adds up because that's where my MCL is 
there's a lot of heat coming out of that. None around here, none here, none here. But as soon as I go here, my arm actually gets warm. Like I feel like I need to pull up my sleeve. So initially I was doing this at least three times a day. Um, I leave this on for about 10 minutes. Um, and then you want to make sure you're at least giving yourself like a 20 minute break before doing it again. In the 10 minutes you should actually feel either the swelling to reduce a bit or just more of a cooling action. So by the time like the 10 minutes is up I won't feel this amount of heat coming out from my MCL. You can do it up to five times a day, possibly even more as long as you're giving yourself like a 20 minute kind of break between it. But for me, just because it includes me having to take my leg brace off and go through that whole process and if I don't have help around it can be a bit harder I'm doing it about three times a day so I'll do it morning um, kind of once I've gotten up and done a little bit of moving around with the brace on obviously then I put this on same around lunchtime normally I get up and make myself something to eat if no one else is here and um, that way it's a little bit warm when I do it and then again I do it in the evening slash afternoon which is when I've had a shower so I have my shower then I do my I typically do my exercises then as well and then I do this as like a final thing for the day and then obviously each time you do it you want to do it with a completely fresh bandage the reason I love this way of doing it is because obviously because my knee is quite fragile at the moment if you can put the mud straight on your skin which is typically how I've done every other injury I've had with the body mud but the good thing about doing it this way is I don't have to wash it off. So, you know, it's I don't like to spend too much time without the brace on because the brace holds me in place and makes sure I don't bend my leg a funny way. As soon as that's off, my leg can go whatever way it wants. So me having to wash the body mud off just creates a little bit of a possible irritation of me possibly twisting my leg the wrong way and, you know hurting myself so this way is just amazing so I can immediately just take my bandage off and put the and not even move and put my brace straight back on and I don't have to get up um, so it works really well for me I don't can't feel much heat at all coming out of my MCL now which is good hasn't even been 10 minutes it's probably been about five minutes and the difference is ridiculous that I like I can virtually feel no heat which is really good and this is the way I do icing essentially because I get quite uncomfortable with the ice on my skin even when it's wrapped up I just feel it I mean you guys know icing is quite an uncomfortable feeling where this is really nice it's a unique action of energized healing mud which combines ice and heat therapy from the gecko by causing vessels to dilate which allows improved blood flow for accelerated healing so this is just my preferred way to essentially ice. In my opinion, it works a lot faster than ice. You don't get that horrible, uncomfortable feeling of having something super cold on your skin. And it's easy, it's clean, but yeah. So that's how I'm going about my process of healing. Um, because obviously I wanna get back to things ASAP. So using the Shirley's Body Mud is just accelerating my healing which hopefully means I will have less time off. You'll find out through the weeks um, but yeah so that's a little update for you guys and that's how I'm healing trying to help my knee and rehab it the best I can. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I will see you probably next week at this rate because I'm sure I'll find more videos where I can sit in front of a camera to keep me occupied. Okay bye guys.